Let's now look at this question. Sexually transmitted infections are also known as A. Bacterial infections B. Venereal diseases C. Heredity disorders or D. Deficiency diseases Well, sexually transmitted infections, STIs, also known as sexually transmitted diseases, STDs. This is also called as venereal diseases, venereal diseases, that is VD. Now, these are infections or diseases or disorders where an infected individual passes the infection, that is the pathogen, right, from the infected individual is passed on to his or her partner, but through sexual contact, there's exchange of body fluids. Now, this could be through anal, vaginal or oral routes, but then it is the transmission of a pathogen that is causing an STD. Right, a disorder from one individual to another. Now, bacteria and viruses are known to cause a number of diseases. So, we call them as bacterial infections, viral infections. For example, I get a cold. I say, oh, I've got the virus. A flu, we can say it is due to the virus. Whereas, maybe pneumonia, we say it's a bacterial infection. So, yes, there are bacterial and viral infections. But only a small portion, a fraction of these bacterial infections come under the category of STDs or sexually transmitted diseases or STIs, that is sexually transmitted infections. So we cannot say that all bacterial and viral infections cause STIs or STDs. Okay? Heredity disorders are those disorders which are inherited. That means it is passed on from the parent to the offspring. This is based on the genetic material, the genes. Right? See, any hereditary disorder is due to a genetic disorder. This could be a mutation of the genes or the chromosome. You know, there is a deletion or an addition of a chromosome. So, this is heritable. But there is no transmission of pathogenic organisms in hereditary disorders. Okay, so that means there are no infections. Deficiency diseases. Well, the word deficiency means lack. There is a lack of something. Now, these diseases are due to the lack of certain essential nutrients, especially vitamins and minerals in one's diet over a prolonged period of time. Now, we would have heard you need to have a well-balanced diet. Why is it so important? Because Everything should be in proper proportion so that, you know, whatever is required for the body's functioning goes on and it is provided and supplied and it goes on smoothly. Now, suppose the body is deprived of a particular vitamin or a mineral over a long period of time. What is going to happen? There is going to be a lack or a deficiency and that is going to lead to vitamin deficiency diseases or mineral deficiency diseases according to what is lacking. Okay? So now when we look at this question once again, sexually transmitted infections are also known as venereal diseases from the option. So B is correct. We eliminate A, C and D. B is the right answer. Now let's look at this question. A 20-year-old male with no history of any sexual contact was tested HIV positive. Which one of these following reasons could be a probable cause? A. He would have shaken hands with an HIV positive person. B. He would have had lunch with an HIV positive person. C. He would have hugged an HIV positive person. Or D. He would have shared a razor or needle with an HIV positive person. Well, HIV is the pathogen that causes AIDS, that is Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. And AIDS belongs to the group of diseases that we call as sexually transmitted diseases. STDs or STI, sexually transmitted infections or venereal diseases. Now, these are infections or diseases where the pathogen that is causing the disease is passed on from an infected individual to his or her partner through sexual contact. The route through which this takes place could be anal vaginal, oral, but then basically there is exchange of bodily fluids. So the transmission cannot take place in any other manner, only when there is exchange of body fluids. 
Okay, so that's what we see here. HIV is the name of the pathogen. Human immunodeficiency virus. Okay, now, if I shake hands with someone who has HIV, will I be infected? No, that's a myth. If I share a meal, breakfast, lunch, dinner, coffee, whatever it is, if I share a meal with someone who is infected with HIV, will I get in, uh, infected as well? No, I will not. If I hug a person who's got HIV, who's HIV positive, will I be infected? No. Children, all these are myths. All these are myths. Okay? HIV can be transmitted or will be transmitted only through exchange of body fluids. This is the fact. The rest are all myths. Please understand that. Because there is a stigma associated with AIDS. You know, the minute people hear the word AIDS or HIV, they take a step back or maybe 10 steps back. So please remember, it's only because of exchange of body fluids can this be transmitted. Okay? Now, sharing a razor, a toothbrush, tattoo needles, injections of an infected individual. Now that is not being wise. You know why? Because chances of infections are very, very, very high. It is not advisable to share razor, toothbrush, tattoo needles and injections from an infected person because you are inviting the virus directly into the bloodstream. So from the options, the option D looks the most probable and right answer. So this question, a 20-year-old male with no history of any sexual contact was tested HIV positive. Which one of the following reasons could be a probable cause? Did is it because he shook hands? No. Because he had lunch with an HIV person? No. He hugged maybe? No. All these are myths. Remember, what he would have probably done is he would have shared a razor or needle with an HIV infected person. So, D is the right answer which says he would have shared a razor or needle with an HIV positive person. So, D is the right answer. We eliminated A, B and C. D is the right answer. A new question for you. Which one of the following methods of contraception can also be used to prevent STDs? A. Condoms. B. Vasectomy. C. Coitus interruptus. D. MTP. Well, STDs or sexually transmitted diseases or sexually transmitted infections, STIs, we also call them as venereal diseases or BD. Now, all these collectively, these are diseases or disorders or infections which is caused by the passing of or the transmission of the infected organism, you know, the infecting organism, the pathogen from one infected individual to his or her partner. This happens only through sexual contact, exchange of body fluids. Among the options that are given, now all the options that you came across are contraceptive methods. Now, contraception, as you all know, are methods that are adopted by a couple to prevent an unplanned pregnancy or an unwanted pregnancy or just to plan the pregnancy, to space out the pregnancies. You have natural methods, you have barrier methods, you have surgical methods, you have chemical methods. There are different methods of contraception. Barrier methods is based on the principle of preventing the sperm from meeting the ovum. There is a physical barrier. And condom belongs to the barrier method of contraception. So now this condom is not only going to help in preventing pregnancy, but it is also going to prevent the transmission of the pathogen which causes STDs. Why? Because these condoms which are made up of latex is non-porous. They are non-porous. So the transmission of the pathogen becomes close to minimum, that is close to nil in fact. You can say nil. Which is why it is always advisable and safe to use condoms. It not only avoids pregnancies or prevents pregnancies, but also prevents the transmission of STDs. Okay? Now, vasectomy is the surgical method of contraception. We also call it a sterilization. This is done in males. Tubectomy is done in females. Vasectomy is done in males. Now, in vasectomy, the vas deferens, which is the accessory, one of the accessory ducts in the male 
reproductive system is clipped and tied, right? So, what happens is that there is no sperm release during ejaculation. This is a minor process. Coitus interruptus is nothing but a natural method of contraception where during sexual intercourse or coitus, the male partner withdraws himself, that is withdraws his penis before ejaculation, thereby preventing insemination or deposition of sperms or semen in the female reproductive tract, the genital tract, thus preventing pregnancy. Now, all these, that is vasectomy, coitus interruptus, they do not prevent STDs. They prevent pregnancies, but not STDs. MTP is medical termination of pregnancy or also called as induced abortion. Now, why this is done? Well, it could be due to many reasons. It could be the pregnancy was uh, due to the failure of a contraceptive or it was an unwanted pregnancy or due to a rape. Now, this is normally conducted during the first trimester. That is the most advisable period, the first trimester of the pregnancy, right? Where before the fetus becomes viable, it is terminated. But does this help in preventing STDs? No, it does not. So, when you look at this question once again, which one of the following methods of contraception can also be used to prevent STDs? All four are contraceptive methods. Of course, MTP is not contraceptive. It is terminating a pregnancy, right? But yes, it is contraceptive. So, all four are contraceptive methods out of which one of them is helping to also prevent the transmission of the STD and that is A, condom. So, we eliminate B, C and D. A is the right answer. Let's look at this question now. Barrier methods of contraception are available for A, males, B, females, C, both males and females, D, none. Well, contraceptive methods or birth control methods as they are commonly called are methods that are adopted by a couple to either avoid a pregnancy or prevent an unplanned, unwanted pregnancy or even to space a pregnancy. There are different types of contraceptive methods. We have natural methods, barrier methods, chemical methods, surgical methods, implants. Well, barrier methods works on the principle of a barrier being created between the gametes from meeting, preventing them from meeting one another, preventing the sperm from meeting the ovum. Now, if they don't meet, fertilization doesn't take place. That means there's no pregnancy that can take place. That's why it is called as barrier method. Now, some of the methods or some of the contraceptives that come under the barrier methods are condoms, diaphragms, cervical caps and bolts. Now, barrier methods of contraception, as I told you, act as a barrier and prevent the sperm from meeting the ovum. Now, in males, condoms are widely used as a contraceptive because of the added benefit of protection from STDs. Because this condom is made up of latex and it is non-porous. So, it prevents the passage of pathogen, you know, from the partner to his partner. So, transmission of STDs is prevented, pregnancy is avoided and ease of use. And condoms are available for males as well as females. Okay? Diaphragms, cervical caps and bowls are barriers that are made up of rubber and these are inserted into the female reproductive tract to cover the cervix during coitus or sexual intercourse. So, it creates a barrier by blocking the entry of sperms through the cervix. Okay? So, now let's look at the question once again. That was an easy question. Barrier methods of contraception are available for both males and females. So, C is the right answer. We eliminate A, B and D. C is the right answer. A new question for you. Which of the following is the least effective method of birth control? A. Pills, B. Tubectomy, C. IUD or D. Withdrawal method. Well, birth control methods also called as contraceptive methods are methods that are adapted by a couple who like to probably avoid, you know, an unplanned, unwanted pregnancy or to space the pregnancy or even delay a pregnancy. 
There are different types of contraceptive methods. There are natural methods, there are barrier methods, there are chemical methods, surgical methods, implants, and so on. Now, these that are listed here, pills, tubectomy, IUD, and withdrawal methods are all different types of contraceptive methods. But among these, we need to identify which is the least effective method of birth control. What do you mean by least effective? That means chances of pregnancy are high despite adopting one of these methods. Well, among these four, the least effective method is the withdrawal method. This is also called as coitus interruptus. Coitus interruptus. Now, this is a natural method of contraceptive method. Now, see, in the natural method of contraception, it is based on the principle of preventing the sperm from meeting the ovum, but without using any external devices, creams, chemicals, jellies, and so on. Okay? So, there is no artificial device or surgical intervention. But here, the male partner withdraws himself just before ejaculation. He withdraws the penis from the female's reproductive tract just before ejaculation and prevents insemination, that means deposition of sperms into the reproductive tract. Now, is this 100% successful? No, it's not 100% successful because there is a high rate of failure. Why? The pre-seminal fluid, that means the first fluid that comes out, contains sperms and the chances of the withdrawal not being properly timed are very high. We know that we need only one sperm to fertilize the egg. So, if the pre seminal fluid is also going to have some sperms in it, chances of conception is there. Correct? Now, pills are a combination of estrogen and progesterone. Now, they work on the principle of inhibiting ovulation. Now, what is inhibiting? See, ovulation, as we know, is the release of the secondary oocyte from the ovary. Right, that is called as ovulation. Now, this inhibits ovulation by sending negative feedback to the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary gland. Why are we talking about these glands? Well, the signals that are sent to the hypothalamus, you know, the hypothalamus in normal circumstances sends signals to the anterior pituitary gland by releasing GnRH, that is gonadotropin releasing hormones. And then the anterior pituitary gland releases FSH, that is follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormones, right, which helps in the maturation of the follicles in the ovary and high surge of LH, that is luteinizing hormone, is what is going to induce ovulation. Now, these artificial or synthetic hormones, what they do is they reduce or rather they prevent the release of GnRH, that is gonadotropin releasing hormone, and thereby FSH and LH release also gets reduced or minimized. That means ovulation gets inhibited. Tubectomy. Now, this is also one of the methods of contraception. Now, here, a minor surgery is performed in females. See, tubectomy is done in females, where the fallopian tubes are cut and ligated cut and tied up. Okay, in simple words. Now, here, what happens is that even though there is ovulation taking place, the ovum is not allowed to meet the sperm at all because the fallopian tube is cut. Can you see that? It is cut. Right? So, no fertilization can take place. So, it's also called a sterilization and this is a terminal method of contraception. IUD intrauterine devices. Now, these, in fact, are one of the most commonly used contraceptive methods by the women in India. Now, intrauterine, it is inserted into the uterine, not by self, but by a medical practitioner or by an expert nurse. Okay, and they make the uterus unsuitable for implantation. So, these three methods, the pills, the tubectomy, the intrauterine devices are all some of the most effective methods of contraception. So, when you look at the question once again, which of the following is the least effective methods of birth control? The withdrawal method. What is it called as? Coitus interruptus. So, D is the right answer. We eliminate A, B and C. D is the right answer.